What's going on guys? Today we're going to do a Q&A video from some subscriber questions and some questions via Facebook. So they're all fly fishing related and figured just be a nice time whenever the weather's pretty lousy to get a nice couple answers quest, uh, questions answered for you. We're going to do this all one cut live. Alright, so first question. Alright, I need the best fly for spring. Well, without knowing what your waters look like or without knowing what species you're fishing, um, we're, I'm going to be making some generalities here. So, hypothetically, we'll say that you're fishing for trout. There's a video I posted, Top 5 Trout Flies. They're pretty much general flies that will catch the majority of trout that you're going to fish, but I would say if you're going to go to any spring creek or you're going to go to a river or what have you, some pretty general flies would be, you know, a small dark or olive black streamer, like a woolly bugger, um, some Adams patterns, uh, some mayfly imitations, some maybe like a prince nymph or a hare's ear nymph, those are some pretty good ones to start. And that question was Amar Multi Lulvik. Alright, next question. Let's see. Jesse Tierney. Oops, technical difficulties. Alright, next question. Jesse Tierney asks, I'm very new to fly fishing and I'm wondering if it would be better to fish in a lake, slow moving water, or fast moving river to get better because I'm having a I have a lot of these things around me. Well, I guess it would depend on what you're fishing for. I have a video on how to get started fly fishing and one of the best things to get better with your casting with all these different uh, hook sets and things would be to be possibly fish for panfish or bass. And for that I would suggest a pond or a lake. Still water. Um, however, if you want to get better at fishing for trout, um, some fast moving water is actually fairly effective. You can use bigger flies. The trout are less picky. Uh, because they can't be whenever they don't get a good look at the fly. Um, slow moving water is also fun and difficult, but it's also nice in a way that you are able to see the fly better. You don't drown your dry flies as easy. And also, it's usually a nice, easy um, water to mend uh, or to make sure that it's a drag free, drag free float. Now, that being said, um, it's going to tie into the next question that, uh, let's see. Will Walker asks, Will Walker asks, Will, what should I look for in a fly fishing spot for rainbow trout? Okay, and he goes on to say when, season of year, time of day, best time to fly fish for trout. Okay, so this will help not only Will's question, but also Jesse's as well. So there's a multitude of different places you can find trout. Trout are survivalists. They will survive in a majority of moving water. Um, they need that in order to spawn. Uh, so in order for, there's a general rule of thumb whenever uh, we tell people or show people where they can find trout. And it's not mine, okay? I actually got this idea and this saying from Tom Rosenbauer who got it from a woman that he works with in um, in Canada or Alaska, I'm not sure. But the uh, the, the saying is, Wood is good, foam is home, and rocks rock. Okay, or a variation of that. Essentially, you can find trout in a basic sense, all right, in foam. Okay, foam in rivers and creeks and in moving water is where you find the veg or where you find the, the food sources. Okay, that's where the current dumps the majority of the food sources: insects and crustaceans and terrestrials, what have you. Okay worms even. So when you're looking for water, if you're looking and there's a huge river you're fishing, a good bet is that if you wade and find a spot in a foam line that you're able to cast to, there will be fish there. Okay? Second one is wood is good. Okay? What we mean by wood is structure. Okay? Uh, down bank trees, um, you know, some under, uh, under the water vegetation, things like that. You can find fish there. And lastly, rocks rock, okay? Whenever you're looking at a stream and the water comes over the, the, the bottom of the, the, the creek bed or the river bed, okay? If there's a lot of bigger rocks, usually it creates a, uh, 
a flow um, break for the trout, okay? They're able to easily swim behind the rock, okay, and come up for food, all right? That's basically how trout aren't exhausted all day. They find places where they can easily access food, the foam, as well as stay hidden from predators, and rocks do that. So, wood is good, rocks rock, and foam is home. Uh, is a good way to get started on that. And to tie into Jesse's question, all right, when you're looking at these different places to fish, use that rule of thumb. It's just an easy, simple way to go about it. Okay, let's see. I've got a Tyler Olson. Can you go over how to use a size 18 to 20 fly? Thanks, keep up the great work. Okay, Tyler, um, using an 18 to 20 fly is actually fairly easy, okay? Uh, but the general idea is that these small flies are usually tied in um, in, a, in a either midge or coronamid, okay, uh, sizes usually to represent small insects. And when you use those, generally is during the winter time. They're the only active um, hatches in the winter time. Usually, I mean, there are some stonefly vari variants that do also hatch as well. But 18 to 20 size flies are usually found um, subsurface. But they do make Adam's patterns. They do make, you know, dry flies that are that size. You fish them just like any other. However, they are very difficult to see. So my suggestion would be to either use a high vis, okay? There's orange or white um, topped, you know, patterns for this size. As well as perhaps use another dry fly, a bigger dry fly, as an indicator, okay? So you tie a, instead of a dry dropper, use a dry, dry, uh, you know, set up a rig where you use maybe a size 10 or 12, um, I don't know, stimulator or dry fly. And then in addition to that, you know, two foot away or, or 12 inches away, 18 inches away, you tie on the smaller um, dry fly. And uh, that can get drowned pretty easily, get caught in the surface film, but as long as you're able to see one of those dry flies, you should be okay. Let's see. Next question. The best flies for cold conditions. That's also hey, that's also Tyler Olson. Okay, cold conditions generally. If we're talking about winter time, uh, you want to go small, usually. Okay, uh, slow conditions. Uh, generally in the cold, we're not so worried about sometimes uh, best flies for that condition. What we want to worry about during cold conditions is fly presentation. Okay. Trout are cold-blooded. They don't want to move too much in order to get that food source. So, generally what we see is, one, matching the hatch, coronamids or midges um, are very small, and they're the only, like I said before, some stoneflies as well, they're usually during cold conditions or winter conditions, they are what's being eaten, okay? So, what we want to do is if we match the hatch, we're usually using some form of variant of that. In addition to that, the most important thing is that, okay, not so much what fly we use, but where we locate and where we present the fly to the fish. So, because they're not moving much, you're really going to have to put that fly right in front of the trout's nose in order for them to really want to use that energy, okay, because they're not getting a ton, all right, their metabolisms are slow. You're going to really want to put it right in front of their nose so they don't have to go far, okay, in order to get that. They're more likely to take in that sense. All right, and last question we're going to cover today is from George Danielwich. Danielwich, sorry if I'm botching that name. All right, there's been several times I've floated fly presentations literally on fish's nose, on a fish's nose, and they wouldn't respond, but would rather detour other nearby and usually smaller fish from hitting. Why is this? Okay, goes on to say that usually it's rainbows and browns. Tried it on small streams and had brookies come out and duck back onto the edge of the bank. <clears throat> okay, so I guess it would depend on what time of year it is, all right, as far as the territorial nature of the fish. But if it looks like they've, they're coming up and they're, swi they're swiping or they're coming at the fly and not taking, it looks like it's drag free, I bet you there's still a little bit of drag that you're not noticing. Now remember, the fish is right on that fly. We're usually looking at it from a good distance away. So, my suggestion to you is that you've got a couple of options, okay? One option you could present is that if you are dead set on that the fly is not dragging whatsoever, um, you might want to add a short tippet 
to the to that fly and add a smaller fly. Okay, maybe look at. I have a video de detailing how to choose a fly. Okay, if you've got the shape correct, all right. You've got the size correct. You've got the. You feel like it's good. All right, change it up a little bit on that smaller fly. Okay, it could be a dry fly, it could be a subsurface. More than likely what's happening is that you think that they're actually you know, they're surfacing for some of the, um, the dry flies going by or you see them sipping off the water. They're actually taking fish just under the surface, okay? And you're seeing them bubble or, or, or swirling, okay? My suggestion is have a fly that's drowned a little bit after that and maybe they'll come up, see that big, you know, presentation you're giving and they'll notice that fly just under the surface and take that. My suggestion is for the fly on that one would be maybe if you're if you're fishing a, um, a mayfly imitation, fish it in a merger right after that under the surface, just under the surface. Another option would be, you know, if, if you're not sure if if it's a hard, you know, look away, you're casting and it's, and it's far away, I, I, I would say that there's probably some form of a little bit of drag. Maybe Go lighter on your tippet, thinner on your tippet. If you're fishing 5x, maybe go 6 or 7x. Um, thinner diameter line, obviously, is going to have less effect via drag. Uh, maybe try that a couple times. All right, you're going to have to fight the fish a little smarter, but give that a try. And uh, lastly, maybe um, if you're fishing on uh, small streams, okay, uh, try maybe approaching the fish a little differently. If you're fishing directly across the water and you're drifting, maybe try a downstream cast, uh, pile cast it, and uh, give a little bit of extra slack, okay? Practice your casting. Um, if you're roll casting or if you're basic casting, uh, try, try pile casts. Try um, wave or wiggle casts. Try, um, you know, uh, uh, different casts to upstream men, downstream men. Um, my suggestion is put a little slack in the line, okay? Uh, make sure that there, there's as much advantage to you when it comes to drag-free float as you can. So hopefully one of those options work for you. If not, leave another comment below and we'll see if we can't figure it out. I'm here to help. All right, guys. All right, so if I didn't answer your question, again, comment it below. I'll, uh, if you have another question, comment below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, guys. I want to do some more of these things to help you guys out, all right? There, some of these things are mysterious. I can't answer them because I don't know what water you're on. Try and be as specific as possible. But even then, I'm not, you know, I'm not a genie. I can't grant your wish to catch more fish. But maybe together we can come up with something to help you catch more fish and help you uh, be more successful more often. All right. Until next time, guys, tight lines.